Hi, I'm Tynan with the Texas Cotton Gin Museum here in Burton. And I'm Ronnie Stanley with the Cotton Gin Museum. And we are going to be planting our uh, cotton patch uh, behind us here today. Um, we're trying to do it as period appropriate as possible, so we'll be telling you a little bit about that today. Um, I'm going to turn things over to Ronnie for just a second, and he's going to explain uh, kind of the process of getting ready to plant cotton. Um, we're, we're talking about the era really in the 1920s. Um, that, that's a, a very common area for us to talk about here at the museum uh, due to some of the equipment that is in our cotton gin. Uh, so we'll be talking about methods used in the, in the 1920s for the most part. So, Ronnie? Uh, back in the 1920s, uh, the only mechanical tractor you'd have probably be the Fordson. And the, the only thing it would really help you with on a cotton farm is turning over the ground from the, to begin with, with a turning plow. But, and everything else was done by a horse, mule, donkey, whatever, oxen. So uh, when you got through picking your cotton, you would uh, come across with a stock chopper and it would uh, uh, go across the ground and, and knock the stalks down. And then you would take a middle buster or a turning plow and you would turn that under. And then sometime in the winter, you would take uh, a middle buster pulled by horses and you would plow the rows up and getting ready for the spring planting. So over the winter months, all the clods that uh, such disease, once they get moisture and they freeze and they dry out, they crumble into usable dirt. And uh, the better, you, the earlier on you can get it, the better soil conditions you'll have for planting the cotton. So right now we have it uh, not as good as I'd like for it to be, but it's good enough to plant uh, cotton. Uh, we have some good dirt here. It's, it looks like it has a mixture of sand, loam. Uh, it's not so sticky as to stick to your plow, but it's not so sandy that it's going to lose all its moisture. So it should be a really good ground for planting. Um, and in the 1920s, there were um, quite a few seed varieties around uh, that we know of by name. Um, so uh, Meebane, uh, Lone Star, and what we're going to be planting today, uh, Lightning Express, which was around in uh, 1922 and 23, uh, those were pretty common varieties. Um, farmers did buy seed um, from uh, seed stores, but they would also uh, save their best seed back from year to year as well because they kind of had an idea of what that would do. Um, as that seed maybe started to kind of decline in quality, that's when they might go back and, and buy some seed. Um, there were a lot of varieties that uh, people didn't necessarily know about because they were their own cotton. They hadn't named them necessarily, so there, there may have been uh, hundreds of varieties that never received a name, so it, it can be difficult sometimes to track um, those. But we are, uh, another one that was common was Texas Stormproof, um, and just like its name, it says uh, what it's good for, which is avoiding the, the thunderstorms and, and things that can damage cotton. Um, especially um, when it starts to open into a bowl. Uh, so there were, were many different types of cotton. Um, as far as planting methods go, um, we'll have a few videos talking about planters in general, but today we have a planter, uh, it's an international harvester planter. Um, it's, uh, was par it's part of a collection that was put together by uh, Emery Schultz in our warehouse. And uh, he, uh, he did a very nice job with that, with that little collection, a little display area. Um, but this, this planter here was uh, capable of planting, oh, about seven acres of cotton a day. Um, so that would be a pretty good clip. It would be pulled by uh, mules or uh, light horses. It's a light enough uh, planter that you could do that. You might also have two seed canisters so that you could plant two rows at once. You commonly see those being pulled by up to four horses because they're a little heavier and they require a little bit more. Those two row planters could plant up to 14 acres uh, per day. So um, another common method for those who could not afford a piece like this was a walking planter though. So a walking planter uh, could plant maybe about three acres per day and just like a walking plow you walk along behind as you're guiding uh, the planter through. Now we're going to be planting our seed about four inches apart which is pretty normal um, and we'll be planting it in these uh, hills behind us here. Um, so basically um, what we were doing earlier was kind of hilling up and uh, cutting in a row uh, with a hoe or chopping cotton. Um, with this planter 
this little uh, plow or sweep, so to speak, on the front uh, would be doing that job for you. So this, this would allow you to do uh, many processes at once as opposed to having to break them up. When you're using a walking planter, it would be more common if you uh, had a team of horses and a light plow go through the hill to open it up for the seed and then have another team of horses and your walking planter come behind to then plant the seed. So both of those methods were very common in the 1920s. The walking planter uh, was even common back into the late 19th century. Um, there were tons of the different patents on those. There were a lot of homemade ones um, around as well. Um, and those, and many of those were even used up until the 1930s. So, and, and then later tractor planters came along. Um, uh, we, we have one that we'll discuss a little bit more um, in one of our other videos. Um, so we, uh, we'll get started planting our cotton here in a minute, um, but thanks for watching.